So uh, 11 week old. Just regrouping after we've been tracking for foxes. There's a nice creek bed down there. This is what you get, you know, so it's Crown Land, a nice big park here. Sorry about that. So you get a nice big park here, um, sort of unusable flood zone um, in these estates where this whole valley has been turned into a state. So you've got this flood zone area. You can see it's ideal. Just things like this. This is just where we're regrouping. We've just been down through the creek. We went all the way from there. So that's directly west. So about 400 meters north and then went into the creek which is just there just here so those trees falling down there the trees falling down through there and then we've come down so that's probably about 450 meters through the creek and then we're just regrouping here so very good earth dogs this is dad very good earth dogs I left them in the creek they had to work their own way out and they worked it out. And you can see here, the man just disappeared through there and this is what they do. It's just the natural way that they move through the bush. So if there's a burrow with a fox in it or a rabbit's in it and they find it, they'll sound the alarm as they already engage and all the rest of them will be onto it in no time so they don't need to find foxes and kill them and engage and fight and kill them but by sheer default the way the mother has been conditioned and the way they've been fighting with each other just play fighting conditioning they're tough dogs already and they're very tough all of them their own individual characteristics and personality and attributes. They're very tough dogs. And they're only going to get tougher. And they're very capable. Here's mum. She's been so super tough. There she goes again. So she's come from a long line of working hunting dogs that's what they do so they're more true to the terrier of what the terrier was back in the 1700s this one here um, DNA test shows straight down the middle Staffordshire Bull Terrier Shorthead Dash Hound, miniature Shorthead Dash Hound with it's got Maltese Terrier I think in the great 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 grandfather's side there was a standard shorthead dash hound that made it with a Maltese that then made it with a miniature shorthead dash hound and it's all miniature shorthead dash hound from that point down and then Staffordshire Bull Terrier so he's the best of both breeds as far as temperament and ability doesn't get any skin conditions um, doesn't have back issues very, very strong, capable, incredibly emotional and intelligent dog. The only thing with this dog is he cannot be left alone. And that's how he came to me, because I knew that he could not be left alone. There's Auntie Zima there, so that's a padded out terrier. She's just gone through a growth spurt and really filled out. As Razzle's just gone through a growth spurt after weaning, and uh, she's a lot more solid and stocky than what she was when she had her four pups. So as soon as they go through these growth spurts and they really become tanks, you know. <laughs> very tough dogs, very capable dogs. Very, very loyal. Seeing who's very loyal. Very, very switched on. This is this one, very emotionally intelligent dogs. Very emotionally connected. And this one, very emotionally expressive as well. She actually groans and moans 
and pick her up and hold her. If you're stressed, worked up, 4.30 in the afternoon, you pick her up. 10 to 5 in the afternoon. And then, or maybe more, 10 past 5 in the afternoon. And then slowing down. And you really notice, you really notice her breathing slow down as you calm down yourself as the day is finished there's nothing more can be done in that realm once five o'clock passes you know some days they have all kinds of days so these are very well adapted very well socialized very well conditioned, very healthy, fit, smart, emotionally intelligent dogs. <laughs>